Today, I'm gonna to show you how I set up the wiring harness for the CO2 project, so let's go. All right, so for those of you who are following along with the CO2 scrubber project, you know that I created this enclosure that holds all the sensor equipment. Now, what we wanna do is go from that shield breakout board that I've showed in another video, and we wanna go from that to the actual CO2 tubes. Now to do that, I'm creating this wiring harness out of these waterproof plugs. Now I got these plugs off eBay, Now the cable that I'm going to use is this CAT6 cable. Now the reason I'm using that is because it has twisted pairs inside that are shielded. So just to make sure we don't get any interference because we're running in a longer run. Now what we're going to do is run that cable into the back of those plugs. Now as I said earlier they are waterproof so you have these little plastic grommets that go on the end of each of those wires. Now after that, I'm simply going to crimp the connector on and then I'm going to add some solder as well because I wanna make sure that there's no loose wires or anything like that. So solder it on and then do it across all four of those different pairs and then I can add them into the connector. So you just have to kind of force them in until they click. Once they've clicked, you can push the rubber grommet in behind it and that's four of them. Now this plug takes uh, 12 on this plug, so I'm just going to replicate the same thing and then I'll have three separate cat six wires that come out of the back of it now That's handy because what we're going to do is run that into a ground Active and also the signal wire so that works out really well after that I cut the cable to I think it's a little bit shorter than half a meter But you have to take into account your resistance of your wire if you're running long run So I'm gonna make sure that I only go at maximum uh, a few meters from the box to the actual CO2 tubes. As you can see, I'm drilling out a hole to run the cables through into the box, and I'm just going to cable tie uh, where I want it to stop, so that way if I pull the cables, it doesn't pull it direct out of the shield, uh, and that's just going to hold it in place. Now, as I was saying before, the reason why I'm running the two pairs twisted together and joined together is it's going to add a bit thicker of a cable size as well. It's the same length so I'm hoping that reduces the resistance down and therefore there's less interference with the actual sensors. Now you can actually work it out uh, mathematically and find exactly what the resistance will be and the maximum length but in this case I'm not going to go to that amount of detail um, because I'm not going to run it that far from the box to the actual sensors. So I think maximum I'll probably get is two meters at the max. Now on the other side of the cable, I'm just going to be splitting those pairs out again, and I'm going to attach them to the connectors, which I've shown you in a previous video on that breakout board. But basically similar type of setup, I'm going to crimp it, solder, and then I'm going to plug it into the back of the black connector. Once I've done one, I just need to repeat the same step until I've got all four of those connectors plugged in and then it will clip into the board and that's basically one row done. So that's, for example, the ground or the active or the signal. So I'm going to keep one wire per each of those and then, yeah, we'll run another set off to the actual CO2 tubes and that will be the wiring all done after that. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe to keep up to date and check out the whole CO2 playlist. And thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.